Hello everyone, Mr. Hisner here, and today we have our last quad or lateral. We have our last four-sided figure that we look at in this course or in this unit. Uh, so this is kites. Now kites have a a higher level of difficulty than perhaps any other uh, four-sided shape, just because there is a lot of triangles and there's some things that you have to see first in order to kind of understand or know what to look for second. So uh, what we find is that there are exactly two sides that are that are the same. So here we have uh, AB is congruent to AD. So I have these two in blue and then we have and then we have these in green. So the sides on the same side of the figure uh, are congruent. So BC is congruent to uh, C, D, oh, actually D, C. Okay, so those are the only um, congruencies that we have <clears throat> for the segments. Now, moving on to the angles. We only have two angles that are congruent. So this whole angle B and this whole angle D. So angle B is congruent to angle D. More specifically, more specifically, Angle A, B, C is congruent to angle um, A, D, C. Now, don't overthink this. If you look at a kite, you can tell that this angle here at A and this angle here at C clearly are not congruent. Just visually, they're not. That's not what congruent looks like. C is clearly smaller. One of these angles will be clearly smaller than the other. The angles that look congruent are congruent. So just take a second, use your special eyes, use your special eyes, and come to that conclusion of which ones are congruent. Now, we do have one more bit of information here that we need to remember, and it is that we have a perpendicular angle, perpendicular lines here. So we have a right angle here. So uh, we have segments B, D, are, and that is perpendicular to segments A, C. Uh, so the, in the, the cross section of this, we do see a right angle forming. So let's look at one of these more involved problems. Let's just jump into the pool. Let's jump into the deep, the deep, the deep end. Okay, so where do you start with this figure? Well, uh, first thing what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about solving these in any sort of order. What I'm going to do instead is if I were you and I had two hands and uh, a bunch of fingers, I would just go ahead and just quickly sketch this. Look at that. Just erase that right there. Uh, dot, 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 dot. Look at this, look at this, and I'm not Monet, right? Uh, and then I can just quickly do a one, two. Oops, that's, that, did that wrong. One, two, three, right? Um, and so this is what I would do, just sketch this on my, on my paper, and I would just come up with these angles all by myself. So let's look at the first one. Where would I start? Well, how about I name, name this A, B, C, D? How about that? A, B, C, D, kind of for redundant. Okay, so let's look. Um, where would I start? Well, I would start right here. Why would I start right here? Why would I start at these two angles, B and D? Well, because I know that these angles are congruent. I know that they are the same measure. And if you look, that means that um, angle 1 plus 73 has to be the same as angle 5 plus 46. So... Uh, measure of angle 1 plus 73 is equal to the same as the measure of angle 5 plus 46. Well, what would make these two things equal? Well, uh, kind of obvious. Um, if, but at first, if you can't see it, you know, maybe that will be difficult for you. But notice that this has to become, this has to be 46. And this has to be 73. Right? Because if these things are going to be the same, then the only way that these two quantities could be the same uh, is if they kind of flip-flop these pieces. Uh, so once you see this, I think it becomes a very helpful tool to solving for angle measures. Now, we can move on to, we can move on to uh, this angle. How about four? Four, we know, okay, so what did we just find? We found one, which was 46, and we found five which was 73, and now we can kind of move on to angles angles two and three, and what you'll see here, what you will see here, is that, um, is that angle two and three look like they might be the same. Let's just take a look here. So we have 46 plus 90 plus the measure of angle three 
and that's going to be 180. And why will that be 180? Why will that be 180? Well, because this here is a triangle, right? Also, this here is a triangle. And so I know that all three measures of a triangle add up to 180. And so we can simply subtract 46 and 90 from 180. So we can just do minus 46 minus 90. Um, and we find that angle two is 44 degrees. Uh, and really, if you notice that these two triangles are the, are the same, right? 46 plus 90, 46 plus 90, uh, plus 2 plus 3. So these will be the same. And so angle 5 and angle, or angle 2 and angle 3, rather, will both be 44 degrees. Because uh, you'll end up doing the same computation there. Now, we have a couple different ways to find 7. Um, you, could, you could use this triangle here. Right? You could use this triangle here, or and you could do, okay, 180 is the whole thing, so I can subtract 90, I can subtract 73, and um, that will give me 17. This is a very small angle. Or you can actually use this whole triangle here. Right? Because we know that we know that this whole angle and this angle in here plus this angle will equal 180. So you actually could, let's say maybe if you wanted to be facetious or you wanted to be fancy, you could say measure of angle seven plus 17 plus 46, that's a six, plus 73 is equal to 180. Um, so, you know, there's, a, there's two different ways that you can look at this and those same two ways similarly are over here. Right, you could look at this whole this whole triangle, and again, you could do measure of angle two, which we found to be 44, um, plus, that's not 17, my bad, this should be 44. That's my bad. Um, measure of angle six now we could find, plus 44, plus 46, plus 73, plus this angle, is equal to 180, and again, you actually get the same measurements here, so, uh, we find, oh, this was 90, of course. And so we find that this also to be 17. So what do you have to do here? Well, always where I will start, always where I would start is drawing this figure. And again, you don't have to be Claude, Monet, or any other good painter. Um, all you have to do is just give it a sketch. And then just know that these two angles are the same. These two whole angles are the same and this angle is 90, and then, and you're golden. Um, there's, there's not much else. Uh, you will find that, you will find that these angles here will be the same, and these angles here will be the same. These are, the, this, is, this is an angle bisector. It bisects, let's say, angle A, and it bisects angle, what was this for us, C? Um, so once you get used to these problems, they actually become, do become very familiar. Uh, however, they start off pretty intimidating. Uh, let me see, do we have more kites? I'm just gonna do one more. Stick with me here, folks. Here we go, here we go. Let's just look at one of these. Okay, so uh, this problem is one that you might see often, but just remember that kites have these kind of dividers here, right? And I'm actually going to get rid of the second one and just focus in on, uh, I'll make a new video for this. Never mind. Uh-oh. Come back. What? My bad.